So yesterday, Elizabeth Warren announced that she was publicly endorsing 20 women running for the Democratic Party in November. Some of them statewide, some of them national, but 20 women endorsements. But it's more important to look who isn't among the 20 than is, because that's the real story here. You'll notice that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not on the list. Rashida Tlaib is not on the list. Ilhan Omar is not on the list. Pramia Jayapal isn't on the list. And the biggest shocker of all, potentially, Ayanna Presley isn't on the list. All of those women, except Presley, of course, endorsed Bernie Sanders during the Democratic primary process. They backed him, Medicare for All, a Green New Deal. They chose him over Elizabeth Warren. But Presley, who was part of the squad with AOC, Talib, and Omar, broke with those three to endorse Elizabeth Warren. And despite that action, she still left off this list. And Warren, to be fair, suggested that this isn't the end of her endorsements. She's going to make more endorsements of other people she feels represents the Democratic Party well, and I have no doubt that that's the case. But given that this is her first major rush of endorsements, who she chooses to leave out at this crucial juncture is absolutely telling. And what it tells me and should tell you is that Elizabeth Warren has utterly betrayed the left or maybe even worse than that, she couldn't betray the left because she was never, ever really part of the left within the Democratic Party and broader American society. Because anyone who was of the left would paper over those differences with Bernie Sanders to endorse a slew of young, dynamic, diverse progressive Democrats who are pushing for many of the same policies that at least ostensibly Elizabeth Warren herself believes in. And this just goes to show that she is either vindictive against Bernie Sanders and all those who stood with him. She's trying to paper over even her very weak veneer of a progressive by ignoring some of the most progressive congresswomen. I don't know exactly what her goal is here, but it looks really ugly and it totally flies in the face of this idea that her and other Democrats outside of the Bernie wing are trying to build party unity. Because if you wanted to build unity with the Bernie wing, with the progressive wing, you'd include AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Primea Jayapal. You'd include them. Of course, you'd include your own person, Ayanna Presley. What a backstabbing betrayal that was, isn't it, guys? My goodness, she endorsed you, breaking with the people that she aligned with when she came in as a rookie, and you do that to her? Good God, Liz, that's ideology aside, what a stunning lack of loyalty. But if you wanted to prove unity, you would endorse the people that endorsed Bernie. And there's not even a real risk. These are not challengers. These are not people looking to unseat sitting Democrats. You don't have to look at a colleague in the face and say, I'm endorsing your challenger. This is very much the case where these are sitting Congresswomen and all you have to do is, I support these young, diverse, progressive Congresswomen easy enough to say, and it would make you look good. And there's a lot of discussion about who Joe Biden's running mate may be in this election. And I don't really think Warren is a favorite. I think she has an outside, outside, outside chance, but she's on the short list. The short list is four or five women. It's like Klobuchar, Harris, Warren, Abrams, you know, maybe Whitmer, the governor of, of Michigan, but you know, she's on the list, but the whole reason you would pick someone like Elizabeth Warren is to build unity with the progressive wing. I don't think that's going to work given how she betrayed Bernie Sanders, but her not endorsing these women really puts a wrench in that whole theory. She's not being picked because she's young and dynamic. She's also in her 70s. She's not being picked because she represents a swing district or a swing region or a swing state. She's in true blue Massachusetts within true blue New England. Her only chance to become VP would be through the argument that I'm needed to build the Bernie bridge, the bridge to AOC and Bernie and all the rest. And she's utterly throwing that away by not making this endorsement. It's just so perplexing because I actually don't believe in Elizabeth Warren anymore. I used to think she was at least decent. 
Not as good as Bernie, but decent. And I at least thought that she was a very intelligent woman, and maybe she is within a traditional academic context. But in terms of political calculations, this is awful. Even if you don't like Talib, Omar, AOC, Presley anymore, Jayapal, you don't like them because they're too radical. The point is you endorse them because it makes you look like you give a damn about progressives. So even when Warren likes to say that I'm just a player in the game, she's a really bad player at this game. Certainly not the kind of person you'd want to pick for vice president. And this just ultimately goes to show, guys, that whether it was from a tactical perspective or from a loyalty perspective or from an ideological perspective, Warren was never going to be a good ally to the Bernie Sanders movement. And if there's one thing we can say, it's that we got to see who Elizabeth Warren really was before it was too late, before Bernie maybe made her his VP or before Bernie entrusted her with a lot of power in his campaign or within his cabinet. We got to see who Warren was at a time where we can now distance ourselves from Elizabeth Warren. And if 2024 comes along and there needs to be a Democratic candidate, mark my words, Warren will run, but she will not get the same level of backing from the left as she would have if she was fair to Bernie Sanders and fair to other progressive women in the Democratic caucus. Now, I just want to say before I close that I wish condolences to Elizabeth Warren and her family. I know her brother passed away due to the illness that the whole world is dealing with right now. This is a difficult time for her and all of those in her family and extended relationships. I wish her the best. None of my political arguments should be taken in any way to minimize or excuse her personal tragedies. But ultimately, this moment won't be forgotten. Who you endorse, who you fail to endorse, tells you a lot about the candidate and the person you are. And I think this is yet another moment where Elizabeth Warren's, you know, sheen among progressives is going to get that much more tarnished.